Before we get into listening to me ramble, like I normally do on every one of these videos, I just wanted to say thank you to all of the new subscribers. We picked up like 60 something subs in the last week and a half, which is awesome. So I wanted to say thank you. And if you've never been here before, don't forget to subscribe and go back and check out all of the other videos. There's probably 30 of them by now, if you counted all of the ones that I didn't number. So yeah, now you gotta listen to me ramble for a little bit and then we will start working on this thing. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Crawford. This is Virginia is for Lowriders. And today I have been messing up for days now. I started working on the truck on Tuesday and that snowballed into like, whenever I say ADD driven and ADD gets straight away and it takes the wheel, this week is 100% exactly what I'm talking about whenever I say it takes the wheel. So this week I finished rebuilding the carburetor which wasn't really interesting enough to record because it's just forever of me cleaning and putting that back together. Finished up making it to where this hose will enter into here and I just put my little clamps back on. I just got to cut this down and that'll be pretty much tied up and now I just have to plumb into that so last week i left off with i needed some connectors to make the wiring work and i procrastinated on the floor which we're going to get to so in doing this i was like man i need to i i, I get tired of looking for stuff in my garage i'm working on the carburetor i'm like i need that one tool and i spend literally like 40 minutes looking for it and that turns into how can I make this garage better which turns into me going to Home Depot and buying a bunch of totes which turns into me organizing and throwing away stuff in my flame cabinet for like a solid hour yesterday last night or yeah like last night at one o'clock in the morning and not working on the truck and going through this and then while I'm in here I'm like I'm really low on acetone. So I get up first thing this morning, I go to Walmart, I get acetone. And I get back from Walmart and I'm like, man, I bought that 30 second cleaner to clean the garage like three or four months ago and I get the power washer out. And next thing you know, I have the entire back of my truck full of trash. I power wash the garage. I There's something wrong with me for real, but regardless, like whenever I said all that stuff, I'm not joking. I did just bouncing around. I went through and started throwing stuff away. It's terrible. But enough about me and my terrible problems. We're going to get back on the truck. It is Saturday night, so I have tonight and tomorrow to knock out as much work as I possibly can so you'll have something to watch on Saturday night. So we're going to force myself to finish cutting the seat bracket down because I never did that like I did on the other side welding that cab corner up on that side going through taking out all this trash and random stuff sanding everything down and getting it prepped for seam sealer I'm gonna finally tackle laying on the ground and coming up with some form of body mount and welding the body mounts to the cab again so everything can be seam sealed and painted and then we're gonna go from there i'm gonna stop rambling i'm gonna explain some stuff here in a second of things that i purchased to further finish some wiring and stuff but yeah i'm gonna stop rambling about this show you some stuff and get to work and hopefully we can knock this out and y'all have something interesting to watch tomorrow maybe i don't know ADD is it's terrible. I don't know if it's like, I just got to shut up. That's what we're going to do. We're going to shut up and we're going to, we're going to talk about some other stuff for a second. So this week I got some plastic clips. I have a problem when it comes to buying things like this because they're so cheap. I know that it adds up, but the initial cost of something this small is cheap. This is like $8. So... I want to run this line in loom 
these are, I would, I'm not sure, I would call it GM is probably one of the first things I saw them on, but everybody uses them. So it's as simple as you push this guy into a hole that you would drill into something and you snap your lumen there and it locks in place. So I got some of those to get this nice and clean. I was going to use this style, which is usually what I'll hold airlines and such with because it's really good against vibration and engines and stuff. But when it comes to simple wiring like this, like if I ever needed to remove the fan and I was to bolt one of these guys somewhere in here, I would have to get tools out and put like a nut and a bolt or if I was to tap this I'd have to there'd have to be tools involved to take the wire out so with those plastic clips just for a little bit of money which is actually probably less than those guys I can just reach my hand up in there and unclip it take the harness out service it I always try to think of things as if I have to fix it later because things break especially aftermarket things so I try to think of it from a daily driver standpoint, if I'm driving this to work at six o'clock in the morning or whatever, and the electric fan took a crap, and this thing started to overheat, and I needed to fix it on the side of the road, blah, 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 blah. How easy would it be to fix it? There's a lot of things like, for instance, this doesn't matter. This is hard mounted, and again, it's good against vibrations and stuff, but that, that wouldn't matter if, like, if this was to go bad, I could just cut the hose and be about my day. This is different. I don't know if that makes sense. Buzz in my head. So last week, I was going to wire in a Deutsch connector to, he to here, but the connectors that I had weren't good enough for this gauge. So I got some heavy-duty ones. I got some distribution blocks for positive and negative, and these are way larger than I thought they would be, judging by the ad. Fuse blocks for stereo systems, and now that the battery will be in the back, I'd like to run a fuse, a larger fuse that's a more common style fuse, which I have a ton of from car stereo stuff. So... I'll run one of those fuses towards the battery for the air compressors and all that. I understand that they're on relays and they have their own fuses, but as many fuses or safeties as we can put into the truck as possible is for the best. I'd much rather pull out a fuse than call 911 because my truck is on the side of the highway on fire. So, got all of that. Got a small fuse block to add some accessories under the dash just in case these things are ridiculously cheap for what you're getting I found this guy on eBay so this will go here instead of running a normal hose and it kinking this truck was covered in stainless steel lines and they looked absolutely terrible because they were all green and nasty it is really hard figuring out what every one of these is called i've replaced all of these most of this stuff is just bulk hose but this has to be a form fit hose for it to work correctly as you can see it's got a really funky angle on it so it's taking me some time i did order the belt yesterday i went to the park store we deal with at work and the guy was able to order me that specific oddball size since it's nowhere close to factory so i'm going to shut up again now that we have an understanding of hopefully what we can get to tomorrow if i get all this other stuff done tonight we're gonna lay on the ground and do some cutting and grinding and welding and not talking
One thing I did get in some point this week was a new coil. And the only reason I'm changing it is the other one has so much of that terrible green paint. And that green paint is so thick that it is not worth the, I don't know, whatever, $16 it was to try to get this stuff off. This stuff is terrible. I've worked really hard on this whole thing to remove all of it. And almost all of that's coming off with new parts also eventually. Kind of thinking something, something like this, maybe here. It could even, I don't know, that's kind of close to the header. Maybe in here. That's pretty far away from the header. I don't think it would get very warm. I don't really care for factory mounting, which is like over here somewhere. I don't know. I gotta think on this. Maybe we'll come up with something before the end of tomorrow on where to mount that. to crack the lens on my GoPro, just wiping it off. So that's pretty cool. We got everything welded up, got everything ground, all of the corners and edges and everything is completely welded and completely ground and smooth and looking good. Now it's time to cover all of it up with some seam sealer. It's kind of hard to tell, the lighting's a little weird in here, but everything is nice and smooth, there's no crazy loops or edges or overlaps this is all metal finished and ready to go so now I need to do the seam sealer I have been using this Eastwood stuff for a very long time probably 10 or so years it was before I moved I did a 65 Chrysler Chrysler New Yorker I've done my 66 Fury with this stuff. I did my body drop truck with this stuff. I've done a bunch of stuff with this stuff. It works great. It's pretty affordable, I guess. I don't know. I'm not a sponsor. I'm just saying. This over stuff that comes in a caulking tube, you can get much higher end stuff, especially that two-part stuff that's extremely expensive. But for the ounces or however this is measured in, the amount that you get for the money I like it and yeah I haven't had it let me down yet I guess so I need to do a whole lot of seam sealing I'm not gonna tape it I in the front I did a tape on both sides that way you get that nice like quarter to half inch seam that's kind of blends in this is the floor. It sucks that I, for whatever reason, whatever's wrong with me, I go through a metal finish everything to the point where you can't tell that it was welded and then I cover it up with seam sealer. I don't know. Not the, not the brightest crayon, we'll just say that. 
But yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to cover up all this work that I did with seam sealer and then eventually cover it up with carpet and paint and all that. And you'll never see it again. Unless you watch this video. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to stop rambling and get to work. All right, it's been a little over an hour or so. I've been letting this stuff set up to where it's completely dry to the touch, so I'm just gonna spray some primer on it. That way everything doesn't flash rust again and I don't have to grind in between the seam sealer because that, that would suck. So yeah, I'm just gonna prime and maybe lay on the ground. It's like 11.45, I think, so. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just go to sleep and try to, I don't know. We're just gonna prime, see what happens. Well, I decided I didn't feel like laying on the ground tonight, so I'm going to hit this with some flat black. Because I don't know if I mentioned earlier, I'm just going to basically sound dead in the majority of the floor. Not the entire thing, but the majority of it. The truck is body dropped. It's a non-AC truck. It's, there's not a lot of places for the heat to escape from in the summertime, so it'll get completely sound dead and to hopefully take care of some of the exhaust heat and truck heat and asphalt and just heat in general so I'm gonna hit this with some flat black and go inside and pass out and then hopefully we can pick this back up in the morning Sunday and again it's kind of late it's like 12 30 but we're out here we're doing stuff I'm done doing inside the house stuff to where like yesterday like I said like three times every time I would stop doing something on this like let seam sealer dry let primer dry let something else dry I went inside did laundry swept vacuumed and I don't know my mind was all over the place yesterday. So the truck now is one general color on the inside. And like I said last night, the majority of the floor is going to get sound deadened. I think the fan was going last night, so I'm not sure if I, you could hear all that. It's getting sound deadened. I'm trying to keep the heat out of the truck as much as possible from the floorboard. I'm trying to make it a little bit more comfortable especially on the firewall because i removed most of that terrible like i don't know it reminds me of old carpet uh padding or something but yeah it is flat black now I even did the back wall and at first i was like i want to paint this nice and have it look like what the inner door panels are going to look like or inner rockers are going to look like and have the which will match the rest of the truck and i'll probably do a nice gloss on this and it'll look really good but i i need to start talking myself out of things like that like it makes sense for it to be the same color as the truck i guess but it's getting covered up with carpet i, I just keep going into these i want to make it more detailed but it's literally for no reason just like the metal work i covered the metal work up with seam sealer so how why did it matter that it was perfectly smooth when you touched it 
it didn't. But it looks nice. And it'll look nice under the carpet. And I'm rambling. So I need to clean up because there's grinding dust all over this place. And lay on the ground and figure something out as far as that the cab corners go. And then we need to move on and do something else because I feel like it's a pretty boring video so far. You gotta get something else done that's progress and more exciting than watching me grind, prime, and paint. It seems to. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Okay. So this is the underside view of what I did. Like I had mentioned in previous videos, I tried my best to butt weld every single thing that I could when it, was, it came to the floor. If I did overlap, it's less than a quarter of an inch. You can actually see my weld on the overlap portion. So all I'll do is take my little air belt sander, chamfer that edge a little bit, and it's it's more of a, a step than it is an overlap because like, like I said, the belt literally there. So I'm not the most skilled with a Sawzall, but I got some of my cuts dead on how I wanted it to lay when it was done. So the bot, this portion here was here. That's how much of a body drop this was, whatever that equals two and a quarter or something like that. I was hoping this is how it would work out on every one of the mounts where I'd cut it close enough when it slid up I could just weld it back on, which is what I'm going to do on all of the spots that I can do that on. You can see all of that's welded and all of that soot stuff will come off. Everything will get seam sealed. Not nearly as pretty under the truck but it can be cleaned up and made to look good. You can see here the underside of the floor pans. It's kind of hard to tell because it's such a tight area for me to get in. But again, I'll do the same thing. Clean up around the edges, seam seal it, paint it. It'll look nice. It'll be strong and pretty close to a flat panel. Some of it's pretty ugly, but it's kind of hard to make all of it not ugly considering there's, I don't know how many layers of undercoating on there that I tried to scrape off and grind off and which is what we're going to have to figure out what's the best way to approach that for the body mounts because they're all covered in that stuff. came up with pretty straightforward simple this is 16 gauge I believe I 
put uh, same thing I used on the floor and everything else. Didn't really matter what brand, whatever brand the paint shop has in stock. Zinc weld through primer I found is the best. I've tried the copper stuff. The copper stuff's weird. It acts strange sometimes with the welder. Had really good luck with zinc based stuff and it's supposed to be the most rust preventative one. But all of these are looking pretty good. I'm going to show you where it goes. I, I, I just can't bring myself to weld them on there today. I, something about welding and getting welding splatter on my neck and ears and hair, beard, you know. I'm just not feeling that today. So we're going to let ADD do its thing like we normally do. And what i really been doing. And uh, I'll show you where it goes and how this works. And we're going to go do something else. Oh. This would go in here like so and have somewhat of a factory appearance. It'll get welded, spot welded on this side and on the top. So I made five so far. I'm thinking I'm going to make enough to do the entire truck and just cut all of them off and make them exactly the same. This is a little bit thinner than this. But like I've said in previous videos, all of the welding that I've done, there's now more welding. The truck is more attached to the floor than it ever was because everything is spot welded from the factory, not fully welded from the factory. So I believe it's got some strength. That's what I'm trying to say. So let's, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of feeling maybe I'll make the mount for that coil. That sounds interesting. We'll do some randomness for the next couple hours till I get tired of being out here. That's the plan. Yet again, ADD got the best of me. And I really don't feel like trying to sandblast all of that green off. So I went to O'Reilly's and bought a cheapy Mr. Gasket solenoid holder. Only thing that kind of sucks is they only had it in chrome, which I will not be using this part of it. I'm not really a fan of the chrome portion to begin with. I'm all about some polished stainless steel and some polished aluminum, but chrome's really not my thing. So I think the bolt placement of this and the size of this is going to work out a little bit better for what we need to do here rather than sandblasting on this for 30 minutes because that green paint is so thick that my sandblaster doesn't like to even do anything to it we're just gonna uh, maybe put this on the shelf as a spare part we have the new one which I don't know where I put it so now i got to figure out a placement for this, which this shouldn't take very long. But again, this is for people that don't necessarily do this all the time or have never done this and are just looking for ways to clean up their engine bay. Cheap. This was, this was $10. You can actually get this off Amazon cheaper than $10, but I'm impatient. And I just wanted to do something that didn't involve me laying on the floor and welding. So that's what we're doing. So this is, this is kind of what I'm getting at. Like this, I don't know, maybe in like 1998, this would have been like what you wanted, I guess. This, this is, this is what I want now. 19 year old me, no, no 19 year old me still wouldn't have wanted this. He would have wanted this. Without the chrome, just a black one, but whatever. They didn't have what I. Well, 
Well, after venturing out into the storm and picking some bolts off of the parts truck, I found that the engine bolts for the engine mounts are the same as whatever those random things that probably hold like power steering or AC supposed to, I don't know. But it's mounted up and it looks pretty good. I like the position of it. This will get loomed, rerouted over here, tucked away. I'll reuse these little clamps. This will get clamped to the loom. Everything will look nice and clean and tucked away. So whenever I'm doing these things, I try to make it affordable, not crazy far reach prices with Amazon and eBay nowadays, or even like Harbor Freight even has some of these little kit things that I buy. Just little things that you're, if you're trying to build something like this and you're trying to get a cleaner result out of it, those little kits and little doodads can, I don't know, go a long way, I guess, what I'm trying to say. So it'll nickel and dime you to death if you bought all of them right off the bat. So because it's like $8 here, $6 there, 12 bucks here. So I try to do it. I've collected a lot of them over the years through all of the projects because they're not just used for one project. But things like this little kit that I picked up for vacuum lines, or what I'm going to show you with the electrical and the clamps and all that. This little kit was like $6. It comes with these random little elbows. Something as simple as this takes this line from the distributor that would normally do some crazy stuff over here and be pretty much pinched shut unless it was really long and drooped over here. But with a simple little rubber 90 and a barb to a barb, I can reroute this and hide everything and have a nice clean connection that actually has a good vacuum on it. A subscriber said, which I agreed with him would be a cool idea, I should make this out of aluminum also and tie it into the look of this. I'm just really having a really hard time finding quarter or three sixteenths line in aluminum that would work in this situation. Most of everything that I've found is brake line and none of that stuff is aluminum. So I'm still on the hunt for that. But for now, I with that little 90 degree guy and some clever routing, I think I can make this look good, at least temporarily. So I'm gonna show you, like I said, I showed you in the beginning of the video, but cheap little kits that add a lot of, I don't know if I'd say value, but they'll definitely add a lot of taking away of headaches later on. Yeah, if that's a thing. So, for instance, let's take this. This is the factory summit connection for that fan that I put on the radiator. This has absolutely no insulation properties. It is spade connectors with bare wires just hanging out of both sides. Meaning, I, I daily drive everything that I build maybe not the caprice so much because it'll kill you because the way the exhaust is routed but i drive it to work occasionally we'll say that at least a couple times a year let's just say one of those days is in the winter time and around here they use salt a lot and it takes one time of salt getting in the connection of this which is extremely feasible being the fact that it's under the engine or engine bay and that corrosion sets in there because of the salt and then your connections crap and your wires are ate up i have seen corrosion creep through wires two feet in my truck before and that was on the inside of the truck on the stereo system so one of the things that i like to do whenever i get crappy connections like this which the, f the factory mazda connections are crappy connections like this they look almost identical to this. When I cut this off, I'll compare them for you. We're going to take that crappy connection off. We're going to change it to a Deutz connector. 
which is 100% sealed from the weather. You can submerge these things and the wires will not get wet, will not corrode to an extent. I mean, if I drove it into a lake or something, of course, but just normal driving, you don't have to worry about it. So I will give you all an example of how to use this thing real quick and what we can do to make this completely boring harness a little less boring and more factory looking, I guess. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. We're, we're going to crimp some stuff. All right. Snip it off. These things are very simple and easy to use. You can get the pliers. Sometimes you can find the kits on like Amazon that come with the pliers, but you can get these basic kits for a standard truck like say like this thing i'm probably only going to need 10 15 connectors to do away with all of the crappy factory mazda connectors and hopefully clear up some corrosion and crappy issues that i've had so if you're not building a bunch of vehicles it doesn't make sense to buy the big quantities you can get like say like this kit's like 10 or 12 dollars you can get the pliers, which I don't remember how much these ones are. I've had these for a couple of years. You can get the pliers for less than $20 usually, or you can buy the whole kit that comes with everything. So I believe that this investment is well worth the money just for, like I said, removing the headaches later on down the road. So I got the little spade in there slip the wire into the end of the spade squeeze that's it that's all it does connector push these guys in through the back and they click into place you lock them into place with the little plastic thing helps if I grab the right plastic thing and this locks everything into place to where it can't come out That's your final result. That is a weatherproofed connector. And then I'm not gonna do the other side right now because I'd have to still wire in that relay. So I don't know how long the wires need to be, but this is much more, I don't know, realistic for cars that leave the garage than this thing. It looks like a newer vehicle, which a lot of vehicles have these, especially equipment. I see them every day at work. Apparently I didn't get that locked in there all the way. There it goes. Yep, so that's it. completely free of any chance of chafing. I need to mount it to the radiator support on the inside, but as far as this goes, it's good. So I'll probably add another one here, and that'll keep this completely out of the way. And again, it has a stockish appearance. They're easy to use.
that's it. Even if I put a rubber insulated clamp on it, it's still going to look kind of floppy like that. But once it's tied up and tied up and tied up, it'll it'll look nice. I don't know if I should get get carried away with it and keep adding them. But yeah, that's an example. I added a second one, or third one, I should say. Doesn't that look like... I know that, like, 18-year-old me, I don't even have an example. It'd probably been some, some, like, run it over here, slap a zip tie through there, run it up through here, snap a zip tie through there. We're, we're trying to... We're trying to do better things as as I get turn into an old man. This is I need to read the destructions, but this is the fan relay setup. I know it says that I need to mount this as close to the fan itself as possible. So I will be running one of those distribution blocks inside of the cab because of like I said, the stereo will be in there, which Eventually, I would like to do some, I don't know, some kind of subs. I don't know what I can fit in here, but maybe some 8s or maybe even some shallow 10s and a bunch of highs. So we're going to need power delivery for that. I need power delivery for this. In the rear will be the air compressor. So there will be a lot, of, a lot of new wiring going on. So this, I know, I can probably at least mount this. This needs to be mounted close to the fan, but it also needs to be in a spot where I can access it. I don't know what the camera is looking at over there. It needs to be in a spot where I can access it, and just in case that relay ever takes a crap. So I'm thinking I would like to utilize on both sides this little cavity here. And like I had said before, I don't know if I want to build a sheet metal box to encase this that's easily removable or tie it into the plastic fender wells that I would like to make but I'm thinking maybe up in here which would be easily accessible turn the wheel reach your hand up in there pull the relay out it's out of the way all of this wiring will be ran into here and through here which I need to do this also this is all that's remaining of the entire harness on this side of the truck is just for this. So I'm going to try to split up the wiring between both sides a little bit, but I think I'm just going to pop a hole in there, bolt that guy into place with some stainless hardware, and it's probably going to be it for tonight. Like I said, I apologize for not having a super exciting video, but we're getting stuff done. Like getting that seat bracket cut down, getting the cab seam sealed and painted and ready it's pretty huge it took me a lot of convincing of myself and making those brackets to where all I have to do is convince myself to lay on the ground and bolt them on or not to weld them on I've just jumbled up today and yet all week jumbled up all week I have some of this antique fat mat that's hopefully okay and we'll go on the floor of this I don't know. Maybe we'll maybe we won't bolt that up and we'll we'll do a little test panel and see if this stuff's any good still. See? See? ADD. Don't take much. Something shiny pops out. Instantly changing directions. So I did a little test spot just to see if the stuff was any good. Because it doesn't seem very sticky just on the roll like the paper doesn't stick to it that well anymore but with a little bit of pressure it seems to stick just fine i try to concentrate where the exhaust is and around the trans tunnel and the wheel wells keep the engine heat out of the truck keep the ground heat out of the truck i don't yeah i don't i don't picture a whole lot of heat coming up through here plus it makes the carpet and the seat brackets fit weird so I'm gonna do probably about halfway up the firewall 
down on both sides and then the main floor and hump so it's the majority of the floor but I'm not gonna try to cover these little tiny slivers all over the place especially cuz it's a custom vehicle and obviously I changed my mind a lot there's a good chance that I could cut some stuff up tomorrow cuz I have a problem with just not leaving stuff alone so yeah we're gonna we're gonna knock this out we're gonna do this real quick that way it feels like something was actually done this weekend Alright, I, uh, I have a tiny, tiny bit left, so I'm going to say that that's good. I got to do a little bit where the foot well is, but I need to go in there and trim the old liner some more, but not looking too bad. A lot of people don't like this stuff because it's a pain in the butt to get off, but I don't know. I don't plan on ever taking it out. And it does work. And I've used it for many years now in many projects. My daily driver Lincoln has it in the trunk. Because if it didn't, it would just continue to tear itself apart more so than it already is. So yeah. I think that's it for the weekend. I'm, I'm pooped. I'm going to go inside, edit this, and get it out to y'all. So Again, don't forget to subscribe and do all the normal YouTube-y things. Comment, let me know what you think. We, uh, we gotta knock out something more interesting next week. For sure. We're gonna get back on some suspension stuff. No. Yeah. And some, maybe some wiring. I don't know. Maybe we'll even weld the cab like we were supposed to do this weekend. I don't know. I'm rambling, so see y'all next week.